Nancy. I don't know the freak what to say. <laughs> what do you want me to sing? Rock and roll and riding. <laughs> Well, I'm going to pass this on to Ray anyway. Ray, Ray has to. It doesn't go that way. There was this woman. Is this working, by the way? Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> there was this woman standing at a crossroads in Ireland. And down one road comes a fella on a horse. And down another road comes a fella in a motor car. And another road comes a fella on a motorbike. And then there's a fella comes down walking. And you're asked to decide who gets off his mark with the, with the girl at the crossroads. And the answer is the fella on the horse, because you see, the horse man knew her. <laughs> but when that translated to America, it went like this. There's a gorgeous looking dame at a cross section, and uh, down, <laughs> down one street comes a guy in a motorbike or something, and uh, down some you know, a guy in an auto, and then there's a fella walking, and then there's a guy riding a horse. Would you believe riding a horse? And you're asked, who, you know, who gets off with the dame? And you know what the heart? You know what the answer is? Harsh it. Couldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't understand Irish humor. <laughs> well, I say the poem. Uh, at the start of the year, we looked at our gear, and we thought of the fishing to come. But the rumours were true, a licence quite new made all of the anglers glum. But the law they ignored and the sport they adored would be as it always had been. But the bailiff said no, on the lakes they would go and chase every fisherman seen. Mid hide and seek games they took all the names and many were hauled into court. From Loch Ray to Kong the sessions went on, accusations of every sort. Convicted of course and fined which was worse. They decided the law to defy, so they waited for months, some of the dumps, to be taken away to the joy. In the meantime, it said, the fishermen made every effort to alter the act. So they all went on strike, and the trout perch and pike thought all of the bailiffs were sacked. <laughs> October at last, and the country aghast, they took the three heroes away. But somebody sinister, maybe the uh, minister, had them home again on the same day. <laughs> Hello, John. How are you? John, John's over here. No, no. <laughs> John McLaughlin. Uh, drop me a line. Wow. What breaking strain? <laughs> I did look at the camera, of course. Yeah, I used to set up. He has it in the wrong eye, you know. An Irishman and the Scotchman were working together, and they were great friends. And one day the Irishman said to the Scotchman, I'm getting married on Saturday. And he said, good luck to you. But he said, I have a problem. I don't wear any underpants. Oh, he says, you can't get married like that. And he said, where would I get them? Oh, he said, go into a draper shop and buy them. Buy a piece of material and take it to a tailor and he'll make it for you. So he, the following day, he went out and he bought this piece of material, all flowers and branches took it to the tailor, told him his problem. So <coughs> he said, I'll have them ready for you tomorrow evening. 
He went to the tailor the following evening and they were ready, but there was two yards of the material left over and he brought it home with them. So on Saturday morning, not being used to putting on the underpants and with the excitement and all, he forgot to put them on. They got married, went to the reception, everything went off with, without a hitch, and in the evening they, <laughs> they went to the hotel where they were to spend the honeymoon. And when they arrived there, he met a few old buddies of his and he said to the wife, I can't leave those lads without having one drink with them. You go up to the room and I'll be up shortly. So he had one drink with the lads and when he got up she was in her nightdress sitting on the side of the bed. And he started to undress and when he was down to his shirt, <laughs> his, she said to him, <coughs> what do you think of me? And he won't look at her and he says, well I think you're gorgeous absolutely gorgeous. So he rose up the shirt to show her this fancy pair of underpants that he thought he had on <coughs> and he said, what do you think of that? Well, she says, I think that's gorgeous too. And he said, I wouldn't mind at all, but I have two years more of it at home. <laughs>